Can you hear your ancestors now? You think we crazy for waking you up? The tribes that they call Negro or Black. You think we crazy for waking you up? Should we uh, let you continue to be in Hijack City? It's time to surf the wave, man. It's time to be who you are. <laughs> How much more evidence do you need that you are more than what you've become? Oh, wow. Seventeen ninety two Barbados Penny Copper Color Races found here. Notice this Templar cross. Who are the Templars? Who is Prester John? Who are you? I mean today you just walk around, it's just whatever, right? Christmas, Christmas, Valentine's Day. You on a whole nother frequency. Then your kingdom that was invaded. Look at the feathers. Look at the Templar cross. And who are the treacherous Templars? Do you see yourself in reality versus the hijack illusion? Man, we just surfing the way. I appreciate all y'all, man, for surfing the wave with me, man, and uh, everybody that's just started surfing the wave, man. Man, y'all just go ahead and belly flop and enjoy this, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, we do it truly, truly for the whole. We do it for the whole tribe. You know what I mean? Everyone, man, waking up across the plane, man, and we're doing our best to be a wall of protection to, uh, you know, really resonate and manifest, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? What this really is. The simplicity of what it really is, man. Energy, frequency, vibration, simplicity. You know the frequency when you see it. The frequency that is from here in the old world here. We're getting to it, man. We're going to surf the wave with my man natural by law. A hop to the wonderful, wonderful bro, man. You know what I'm saying? Straight up king, straight up king, man. Uh, natural by law, man. You know what I'm saying? That's it's 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 a kingly frequency. It's a priestly frequency. It's a priest king frequency. You are masters. You were created to be masters. You were created by the framer and shaper to be masters. Energy, frequency, vibration is all I'm saying to you, so-called Negro, the one, the tribe that they want to label these adjectives, which is neither a person, place, or thing. You want to know something? <laughs> man, you want to know something, man? Oxford Dictionary. Oxford English Dictionary. Nagger, Niger, Negro. Negus, Negus. Now we're talking King. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Wait. All right. Man, love to the fam on Instagram, man. Surfing the way, man. It's a lot of fam, man. It's been a. Uh, <laughs> on Instagram, man, just laying it down, slaying that, uh, slaying, slaying, man, just straight slayers, man. The frequency, man, y'all, y'all really holding the crystal sword, man, and the sword is pure crystal, baby. And we about to dig on these crystals, but now you heard the term nigger, nigger, negro, nigger, nigger. In the Oxford Dictionary, it says a dark-skinned person of any origin. Okay, okay. 
But what's the drop? Oh, okay. Because you have to scroll all the way down to get it. In early U.S. use. So in early U.S. or the Corporation of America. Not America, but the Corporation. The U.S. Corporation. So in early use of the U.S. Corporation. Usually with reference to American Indians. Wait. We're just talking Niger. 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 Oh, you thought they were just saying it because you've connected to some Ni Niger Niger River on, uh, across the plain? <laughs> nah, man. Nah, man. In early use. So the earliest use, in early use, so the drop is that this corporation originally started using nigger to refer to you here, the Indian. Now, does that fit the proxy today? Nah, it says dark skin person. So now, I mean, look, man, look, man, I'm just talking about you. You. So he was called a nagger by the corporation in early U.S. 1792. They would be calling him a nagger. This is who the nagger is. The king, the nagoosh, the nagoosh, the nagoosh, the naga, the fiery dragon devouring the venomous snakes. A dark-skinned person of any origin. So then it became about any origin. So all dark-skinned people started be calling, being called niggers. But in early use, in early U.S. use, usually with reference to, usually with reference to American Indians. American Indians. Well, you just saw the copper color penny, and you know when you go into that Noah Webster 1828 dictionary. Now, you saw that pennies in what, 17? 1770, whatever. So, and you know the definition of American, because we always talk about the definition that they put in their dictionary in 1828 of American. A native of America originally applied to the aboriginals or originals or copper color races. Dark skinned people. We know uh, what a penny look like. How many of you fit this complexion? Go, go, go. You might be the copper color races found here. Because your ass is on the penny with a crown, nigga, and feathers. You might be the copper color races found here by the European. You might be the American. Con. Con means priest. Con. That is the priest king. Genghis Khan was a con who was hijacking the cons. Wong Kong, Prester John. All these titles have been hijacked. And you are the Khan, the Grand Khan Yan, the priest, the tribe of priest kings, royalty, queens. But now applied to the descendants of the invaders, those who invaded all those tribal wars. Now their descendants get your crown. They get your crown. Now they're on your penny, right? See, 1792, 1828, huh? 
Oxford Dictionary, a dark-skinned person of any origin in early American or corporate U.S. use, usually with reference to American Indians. So the dark-skinned person found here by the European, the copper color race that was on the copper penny is the nigger. That's what they're saying, that that's what it is. So specifically, my Negro, specifically, you gotta just, you gotta, you just gotta, you know, flow with this shit. I know it's fucked up. I know it's fucked up. We in the mind of a hijack, but just flow with this. Just flow with me, man. Get you, you know, just, just be cool. Just be cool for a minute. Get you some wine, you know, chill out. Man. Look, man. So, all this nigger talk, you thinking it got this relation, the strong relationship with Africa. That's, you know, that's, that's all you've been taught with public school. And then the Oxford English Dictionary. Nagger is directly talking about a dark-skinned person. Early U.S. use in reference to American Indians. American copper-colored tribes that were found here on the currency this is the old world and we've always been here you know we just surfing the wave man we about to get into some natural drop it's about to be an amazing time surfing the wave with my bro you know i'm just i'm just going through some tabs that was up man love to my man how i stu j stu out of memphis man Cause uh, yeah, man, you know we just got that last drop with the whole uh, Jacob and the burial in Hebron. That's going on in Hebron, and we're floating with the uh, Teach man. Love to my man Teach. Um, you know what I mean? Talking about the uh, Bolivia, Hebron, uh, and I said Chevron. Uh, you know, I was talking about uh, Chevrolet. You know, I was talking about driving a Chevron. <laughs> but your same thing, man. Oil business, man, and Chevys are Chevys, man. A Chevy is a Chevy. It's all Hebron, man. So it's all in your face right here where you're sitting. They're calling things Chevron, which is Hebron, which is Hebron, which is where Abraham is buried and Sarah and Isaac and where Jacob was, his descendants, his sons were fighting Esau so that they can bury their father with his father in this cave of what is called Machpelah. So I just cross-referenced it a little bit, Machpelah with uh, Bolivia. I couldn't really find a connection, but the only hit I got, and you go look it up, has to do with Memphis, Tennessee. I said, there's a cave of Machpelah? You're talking Hebron? We're talking Hebron? And then I had to click on it because I said, maybe they tripping. Hebron. Hebron, man. Y'all see that? Hebron. Tomb of the Patriarchs. I'm saying where Abraham is buried and Isaac and them. The cave of Machpelah is the world's most ancient Jewish site, Israelite site, and the second holiest place for the Jewish people after the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. So we're talking the real thing. They linked us to the real thing. The cave and the adjoining field were purchased at full market price by Abraham. So he bought the land. We were always buying the land so that we can have the records beyond us saying, oh, the creator gave it to us. We have the records that say, no, we have the records of owning the land by deed. Yes, it's our creator's decree. And yes, we also have the paperwork, man. And where is that paperwork? Is it in the Grand Canyon? Is it, where is it, where is it? It's all kind of records, man. So the market price was bought by Abraham 3,700 years ago, they say. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, and Leah are all uh, later buried in the same cave of Machpelah. These are considered the patriarchs and matriarchs of the Israelite people. The only one who is missing is Rachel who was buried near Bethlehem where she died in childbirth. A double cave, a mystery of a thousand 
Gears was um, covered several years ago beneath the massive building, revealing artifacts from early Israelite period. The structure was built during the Second Temple period by Herod, Herod, King of Ju Judea, providing a place for gathering of Jewish prayers. All right, so now they're trying to lead you to where they are here, right? All right, all right. So we're just talking, you know. Now they're not linking this to Memphis. They're just talking about what should be over there. So they're gonna try to lead lead you to some, you know, what I mean, some artifacts, whatever's going on over there. But we're talking Tennessee. Don't get it twisted. So whatever we're talking about here, the only link they're giving us is the real thing. So should we surf the wave and say? What the hell is in Memphis? What's going on? How I stew, you might have got to check out this crystal shine grotto because this thing is built in what they're calling a cemetery, Memorial Park Cemetery. So this is one of these unique finds is a collection of Rodriguez sculptures completed in Memphis's Memorial Park Cemetery. So they're gonna their story is that this artist, this Mexican artist born in Toluca, Dia Dia Dionisio, Dionisio, Rodriguez grew up working with his father as a bricklayer in Mexico City, familiar with concrete work. Rodriguez turned his artistic talents into lifelong career in Fall Boys, Fall Fall Boys, Fall Boy creations uh, you check it out spread across eight american states washington dc mexico and mexicans arts unique concrete sculptures depicting stone and foxwood uh, may be found in 22 sites so he does this shit right he he does all these little you know sculptures and things like that so he's going to freak this cave i mean he's going to freak it out he's going to put jesus all over the place you're going to see all this new stuff he did but we're trying to say what's the original drop before this artist went in there and did his thing. And is this the actual cave of Machpelah? In other words, is Abraham... Hold on, man. Before I go crazy. I'm just saying. Is Abraham... Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, and Leah. All buried in Tennessee. All right, let's let's keep going. You know, we're just surfing away. I mean, maybe not. I'm just asking the question. See, we don't got to have the answers. We just got to have the right questions. So, I mean, look, either Hebron is in Bolivia or are we saying Hebron is in Memphis? And why is Memphis Memphis? It's getting confusing. But let's go. <laughs> One of these unique finds is a collection of Rodriguez sculptures completed in Memphis Memorial Park Cemetery, taking a decade to complete the Crystal Shrine Grotto. is one of the most unusual Fox Voice creations. The Grotto, a man made cave, is filled with scenes depicting the life of Jesus Christ. All right. So did they just come and start hijacking this shit and doing Jesus Christ sculptures and all this kind of stuff like that? I mean, why why do it in the middle of a cemetery, y'all? I mean, I've seen a lot of cemeteries, but none with a super duper crystal shrine. When have you seen a crystal shrine in a cemetery, man? A crystal shrine in a cave? How does that got to do with anything I do with a cemetery, man? All right, you know. Because obviously it's already a crystal cave. So he didn't create the crystal cave. He just started sculpting Jesus. Alright, so. Y'all yeah, looked that up. You got to do with that last drop. We're just talking Hebron. Alright, we're just talking Hebron. And is Hebron in Tennessee? Or Bolivia? Or is both? Both, you know, surfing away. <laughs> now, love to the fan, man, that dropped this on me, man. This, uh, you know, it, this is, you know, real dope, real dope, man. Love to my man, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Johnson, man, dropping that drop. 
I'm going to leave a link, man, below to Jonathan Johnson, man. Uh, just started dropping. Powerful drop, man. You know, great, great Ruwak, man. So go ahead and support the bro. You know what I mean? We're all just surfing the wave, putting this together, man, brick by brick. And, uh, yeah, he dropped this, man, on me, man. We're, we're, we're both looking for this joint, man. Hey, where's my... Uh... Oh, yeah. Now, this is the book, Negro Questions. This is part six, the 13 black colonies. You know, you got that black ass King James drop. We talked about the black King James, and these are melanated tribes more and more. All the war was already happening. So, it says the research in this book will prove that the 13 British colonies, remember the 13 American colonies? All right, 13 British colonies were founded by four black Scottish kings. King James, the sixth of Scotland, King Charles the first, King Charles the second, King James the second, Duke of York, and King George the second of England. This book features the testimony of former Secret Service agent John Mackey of England. So you got a Secret Service agent giving testimony <laughs> in which he gives black descriptions of the princes, nobles, dukes, and kings of England. This book also features a ship's manifest that describes the Jacobites while they are boarding the convict ships to the Americas as brown, black, swarthy, and ruddy people. Ruddy. Ruddy. Are you getting the picture? Do you see? <laughs> I mean, it's all light out there for you, man. So, anyone got that PDF, man, let me know, man. But I did uh, actually come up on a, on a dope book that I put in the library. And y'all, man, go check the library out. You know, hit a 42todrop.com, man. And click on Drop Library. I'm giving you the password right now, and the future is going to change. So you're going to have to su subscribe to the website to get all the uh, latest passwords because we'll keep changing them to keep all the hijack out. But, uh, yeah, 1234 gets you in there right now. Go check it out, man. Added another 30 PDFs, so we got about 130 books ready for you to view or download. Most of them you could download. Some go right to a link that you can't download. We're still looking for those, so... If you find ones that you can't download, maybe you can find a downloadable copy. Let me know, man. Hit me up, man. Music at 432thedrop.com. So this book features the testimony of former Secret Service agent John Mackey of England, in which he gives black descriptions of the princes, nobles, dukes, and kings of England. This book also features a ship's manifest that describes the Jacobites while they are boarding the convict ships to the Americas as black, brown, swarthy and ruddy people these are not the only documents that validate the claims of this book we have the writings of thomas jefferson professor boyd dawkins benjamin franklin and much more so get this drop get this drop it's 25 bucks it ain't that bad man so hopefully we can find something on that All right, we're getting to it man we're getting to my man natural i'm just doing some tab surfing man a lot of times I got all these tabs up. I just want to share them with you. If I don't, you know, then I start going crazy, man. I got to share them with you. So, remember, man, we're talking about Nagger, Oxford Dictionary. All right. I got to keep adjusting this, man. These are all sort of case by case. We're talking about Oxford Dictionary. Nagger. All right. So, they call you Nagger. Well, they only started doing that here, man. The earliest use, the earliest use in early U.S., in early corporate use, that was here. So, again, this just, you know, further validates that your ass was found here. <laughs> that you are the copper color race found here. You were just found here is all I'm saying. 
I know you all think you come from one part of the earth body, but the whole earth body is melanated. The whole earth body is melanated. Pre hijack. The whole earth body is melanated. This research in this book proves that 13 British colonies were founded by four black Scottish kings. And if you can't give them Europe, what do you give them? And we can all love each other and be cool and all, all that shit. But first, we got to keep it real. You help wake me up, I love you. You keep trying to put me to sleep, you're my enemy. You help wake us up, we love you. You keep trying to put us to sleep, you are our enemy in this frequency because we're only going to cling to reality. We're only clinging to reality. Don't come at us with hijack because we will bury Sanders that shit. Nagger, Nagu, Nagush, because you are kings, because they found you as kings. You are Nagus. King royalty, the Negus, of who they called Abyssinia, the mixed multitude, dark skinned person, American Indian. That's who the nigger was. That's who the nigger is. And when they say nigger, that's who they're talking about. And you know it. Because you were just found here. Man, we just surfing away. And right quick, man, before we get to my man, uh, Natural Man, this is about to be great. I was just digging on this, man. I just want to drop this on y'all. Y'all know anything else about this Merglees, man? Y'all let me know, man. Merglees is the sword of Ganalan. So we're talking a sword. So I never really heard of a sword referred to as really anything in particular. I mean, I know they got different names for their swords, but. I didn't, you know, this Merglis. So this appears to be the swords, you know what I'm saying? What they call it, the death brand. Is the sword of Ganelan, a tra a treacherous French Frankish count and nemesis to the titular hero of the epic La Chanson de Roland and the Song of Roland. So who they're calling treacherous? I mean, whose sword is this? This is a sword, like Excalibur, you know what I'm saying? We talk about knights, and we talk Templars, and we talk Templars. They have swords, and their swords have names. And it seems like their swords have been popping up all over the place, but we haven't been looking for them. And you know how they say in the movies, man, like, only certain people can yield these swords. Now it appears, just like you heard about this famous Excalibur, there's also a sword called Mergles, who they call the Sword of Ganela. Now, who's Ganela? We're just surfing away, man. I'm just doing this with y'all. In the matter of France, Ganela is the knight who betrays Charlemagne's army to the Muslims. Now, if you weren't rocking with this Charlemagne, Charlemagne, if you were, were you, if if you were on the other side of that fight against Charlemagne, then hell yeah, you betrayed Charlemagne. That's your enemy. He says to the Muslims, leading to the Battle of Rakavu, Rakavu, Rak, Rakavu Pa, something like that. Pass. His name is said to derive from the Italian word engano, meaning fraud or deception. He is based upon the historical Winilo, Archbishop of Sens, who betrayed King Charles the Ball. All right, so I don't know, man, if this guy's a hijack or not. But all I'm saying is that he has a, a sword named Merkley's. And they're linking him to the Franks and all that. Now it says at least three swords bearing the similar name. All right. The sword of Elias. Ah. Elias also has a sword named Mergli. Now we're getting somewhere. You thought it was just about Ganelan, right? 
Now, when you start looking up these stores, and I thought I had that, you know, somewhere, but I had another list up that showed up. Oh, there we go. Notable swords. Yeah, yeah. All right. Look at the notable swords. So, these are just, you know, great things to write down and kind of look up one day when you just, you know, want to just surf the wave. These are all names of swords, and all these swords belong to knights, just like Excalibur. And I think they will connect to the ancestors today. But they're hiding these swords in these places. Seven branch sword, Suguri Na Antino, Sword of Gulien, Sword of Osman, Kalara, Kolana, Lobera, Sword of Saint Peter, ah, Sword of Saint Wenceslas, Wences, Wenceslas, Sword of Stalgrad, Tazona. All these are swords. I see. Almasi. Alright. Alright. Mergles is here. And Mergles was also the sword of Elias. The swan knight of the crusade cycle. Whoa. Then you got the sword of Cornumarot. The Saracen king of Jerusalem. <laughs> you already know where I'm going. I'm going to the red thread because your surnames that you always had connect to the same thing that you see right here. We're talking about Scottish, Scotland, right? Four black Scottish kings now. Just because they're black doesn't mean they're all of the same tribe. So you have four Scottish kings or kings in Scotland of one tribe. And they were up against the Rus and the Picts in the Scottish Highlands at the time. The Ruses and the Picts that was whooping up on King James and the Jacobite Rising. So it was... This more, more means great, and that more, more means great. It was this con and that con. It was already a tribal affair. Psalms 83, right? And they call him a Saracen, a Saracen's head. And as you know, we're talking only about the lost tribes of Israel identity. Return to the featured surnames for the red thread, lost tribes of Israel. So even though they try to hide it in Oh, it must be an a, a, a Islam or, or Arab thing. They you know they're talking about Israelites. And they call him a Saracen. And when you look at the sword of the Saracen, right? Because this Saracen has a crest. This Saracen looks like you. This Saracen looks like you. Saracen. King, royalty, royalty, king, chief, ruler, whatever you want to call it, ruler, rulers, Saracen, Saracen, a Saracen sword, Mergle. Mergly, Swan Knight of the Crusade Cycle. Swan Knight. We're about to get into this forbidden history, man. And kind of do this dance, man, with uh, with natural, man. It's just, you know. This might be a part one, part two, man. Because I, I ain't going to rush it, man. It feels too good. Because when they say Swan Knights, I love to the sister, man, you know. That dropped this on us, man. I appreciate it so much because we're just talking Swan Knights. In 1775, Nehemiah Theodoric reconquered the American Empire of Kalelus, which means promised land. In 775. Listen, man. 775. 
five. This is a part of your story you haven't been told about the Americas and the copper color races found here. The tribes. You thought it was just running around with bow and arrows, but I'm telling you, in a book called The Forbidden Histories of America, that's extremely hard to find. Written by Daniel Lowe in 775 of what they're calling the hijack A.D. Nehemiah Theodoric, who is also a Theodore Rus. Rus as in Rus. Rus is Rus is Theodore Rus. There's different Ruses. There's big clan, Clan Ross. A lot of sub clans. Yeah, you, you know, ones that got hijacked, ones that remain true, just like everything else. <laughs> so when you search these things, you gotta get to the root of it all, man. Love to the tribe. I hop to the tribe. Let's go. So all I'm saying is these these Rus, these pigs have swords. Some called Mercury. Who is the sword of Cornumerant, the Saracen? Alright, the Saracen. King of Jerusalem. We're talking about the what? Lost tribes of Israel identity. We're talking about your 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 sword. Mergle, Saracen king of Jerusalem, taken by Ber ba Baduin de Seri, and historical Baldwin the first of Jerusalem. So it was taken, his sword was taken. All right, and then you got this other sword of Mergle over here, man. So you, if you follow these, now we're just talking swan knights. This sword, the sword of Elias, the swan knight. And I'm saying right here in the Forbidden History, Swan Knights, let's get it. So 775, Nehemiah Theodorus conquered, reconquered the American Empire of Kalelus. Kalelus was ruled by the Sylvanus Toltecs, 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 the Toltecs. We're talking 775, so this Toltec title is coming from Toltecs. In 775 A.D. Also named Sylvanus. Also named Solomon the Builder. And my man Natural just about to, about to be dropping on this Solomon. He just dropped a wonderful joint about Tyree and Maine. And it all connects. Pure water. Because Solomon the Builder. Can we surf the wave? Are we are we able to have a theory that this is Solomon? Not happening in the BCs, AD, BCs, but literally happening in according to their chronology, 775. Does this put a different spin or perspective on who you are? That you just got conquered and this is giving you the forbidden history of how long this was going on. Now this conquering is a family affair. This got nothing to do with the white man. It's got nothing to do with the white man. This is one tribe and another tribe. This is the Ruses and they're going and this is Solomon. Solomon's kingdom. Now, why is Solomon's kingdom being split? Natural by law is about to get it in the script. You remember when Solomon's kingdom was split? Israelites and Israelites. So now you have an Israelite, Israelite scenario. The Ruses that are reconquering the American empire of Kalelus, the promised land. Kalelus was ruled by Sylvanus Toltec. Zus. Is the spell breaking? Solomon the Builder. 
mound builder, natural by law, the hereditary ruler of this former, who they call Jewish, as you know, you've been surfing the wave, we break that down, not into Jewish, Jewish ruled Roman colony, but into Israelite Romani, because the Roman is the Roma out of India, and these are the Indias, and these are the Romani, and there's a whole nother migration coming out of that India there, and how it connects to the whole land, and how we've been rocking as one India. So the former, man. <laughs> so Kalelas was ruled by Sylvanus Totec, Solomon the Builder, the hereditary by seed ruler of the former Israelite Roma or Romani colony in India. Kalelus was founded in the first century BC by the Babylonian Exilarch. These are your Israelite kings in this Babylonian captivity. Known as Sylvanus Ogam or Sylvanus Brabo or Solomon the Second Babylonian Exilarch. We're just talking you, Saracen, right? You just gotta just surf the way, man, and be the water. Get that uh Preston John. Who's that? David Slauson. I know what I'm talking about. Prince of Georgia. Who's Preston John? Oh yeah. You know we coming. Yeah. out man they try to hope again we get it's getting too good yeah 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 they trying to get us man we'll be back in the present this is why the Preston John series is so powerful man because it's already connecting these things with a with a pure water thread and, and, and just a perspective that we haven't taken. We're cutting through Georgia and Babylon. We're talking about the Exilarch David, the sixth Sauceland of Babylon. And this is a king, David. This is an Exilarch Israelite king with this title, Sauceland of Babylon and Georgia. Because he's an Israelite king coming out of Babylonia, out of captivity. And Georgia is Russia, is the Rus. Are the Rus, are the Picts, Rus, Rusha, Rus, Exilarch, Babylon. Now look, it says immediate family. It says estimated around 1300. So this is a King David around the 1300s. Raja Haraja Chola II, Jadaran, Emperor of Soli, Prester John, Priest King. So Prester John, priest king, King David. So he's so son of priest king, Prester John. So this David is the son of Prester John, Raja Her Raja Chola II. So again, these are titles. And here it says, Father of Exilarch has died, the sixth of Babylon, and brother of Solomon. Now you have Solomon, Israelite king of Telmas. And I'm telling you all of this because <laughs> it's beautifully connected to what? Solomon the Builder. Solomon. Oh man, we're about to get it, my bro. We're just getting started, man. Y'all get in this library, man. Again, you get here, drop, you know. 
hit that drop library boom boom and you put the password one two three four and make sure you subscribe to our website and uh, you'll continue to have the password 130 you know PDS man that you can just surf on for free man and just dig on at your own pace man we haven't got to man we we had less than one percent so we have a lot of drop to cover man and this is where we're gonna do it at this is our little secluded alcove this is where we get down this is what we do at four three two the drop and uh our radio's coming back soon man You'll be able to come right here and get the radio right off the box, man. So, you know, love to you, man. Love to the family for making it happen. For being patient with us, man. Patiently wait. All right. So get that drop. So we're just talking Sylvanus. So, so one Israelite king conquered another Israelite king. We have different kingdoms you're talking about king solomon and we're about to get to why right. hereditary ruler of the former israelite romani colony Calais was founded in the first century bc by babylonian exilarch man we're just talking exilarchs right we're just talking exilarchs right and David's letting the dangle Dawood, and we're talking Prester John's, who they also call Raja Her Raja Chola. So we have to get back into the Cholas and the Jadarans and the Pandies and Pandians, Panda p -p Panda p -p Pandas. <laughs> and this is another wave, you know, of, of the Prester John. So we surf through the, through the Khans and the Genghis Khans, through the Raja Her Rajas and the Cholas and the Pandas, and that's what makes that series so you know fun so we had 27 parts we'll be back in part 20 part 28 very soon and keep keep flowing man we're all building up and again we're just talking solomon man we're talking preston john we're talking solomon we're getting the forbidden history solomon the builder mound builder babylonian exilarch known as sylvanus ogham sylvanus bravo solomon the second babylonian exilarch nazi of mara Ruler of Sumer, Somerset, Sumerset, Sumer, Sumeria. In Britain, a great Roma, Romani Israelite ruler, soldier and ancestor of the Swanites. Barber Hakazin. He also had a fleet of trading vessels known as the ships of Solomon or the Swan Boats. So these Swan Negro Knights had swan negro boats we're just talking about the nigger right american indian right american empire american empire of kalalus right copper color race found here american right he also had a fleet of boats doesn't solomon have a fleet of boats did you know they were called the swan boats and they were the swan knights and that they had a sword called the merglei the saracen King of Jerusalem, the Swan Knight of the Crusade Cycle. So when they came out with their crosses looking for you, they were just trying to emulate your symbols. The cross is the towel. The cross is the towel. And I'll drop this, man. We don't got time for it now, man. But this had to do with the uh, Tuscarora. Among the Tuscarora, the strange and mysterious death of John Lawson. Excellent article to drop on the Tuscarora Indians of North Carolina murdered John Lawson, sticking him all over with pitch pine splinters before setting him ablaze. At the time, Lawson may have been the best English friend the Tuscarora had. So he was some white dude that got jammed up, I guess, you know, by the by the real deal. I'm sure, you know, he must have stepped on somebody's toes. Now, it says, according to tribal legend, I know this is very small, the Tuscarora was split off from the Araquis 
the Iroquois, the Iroquois family of allied tribes. So they were connected to the Iroquois. And we know that connects to these Hebrews here in America. And it's why they had the Paleo Hebrew lost lunar stones in Hawiku in New Mexico. And they're dating them back 2,000 years or so. So you have Paleo Hebrew, nine commandments already here inscribed in a major boulder, ton boulder. They're finding you here. You're looking like this. Columbus brings a Hebrew interpreter to talk to you and says in the Bibliotheca de Colombian in Sevilla, Spain, that he's coming to America, the holy city, to conquer the holy city. He said he's coming to America in the Biblioteca de Colombina. In Sevilla, Spain, he's coming to America to conquer you with the Dumb Diverses 1452, Papal Bull. Conquer the Saracen, right? Conquer the Israelite, right? Israelites that had swords. Oh, yeah, this is in the, uh... Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hijack is real, man. Yeah. Who's that? Yeah, the Crystal Shrine in Tennessee. Um, you know, surf the wave a little bit. You'll find all these pictures of it. It's pretty amazing. Now, you tell me. They said it's a man made cave, but are any caves truly man made, or do they just start, you know what I'm saying, jiving with them now? Inside this, you got this. These black statues right so this is supposed to be the burial place of jacob and abraham and look at what you got in it a dark skin indian in memphis tennessee in the cave of mach peta the burial place of abraham sarah isaac jacob leah all right in tennessee man Again, man, get that library, man. Get in the library, man. So, yeah, we just did a little intro on the uh, Forbidden Histories. We're going to fall back and enjoy. Uh, we're going to fall back off our drums, man. That was pretty dope, man. Love to Daniel, ne ja Daniel Nelson. Man, we're just talking Sally Munn, man. We're talking Preston John and the Exilarchs, man. We're talking 775. When we talk natural, we're saying it's by law. We're going to surf the wave, man. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Just just try to connect, man. Just just fall back. Suffer this thing. Natural by law. What's up, man? Real one. Subscribe. Subscribe to all the tribe, man. And, uh, you know, just go with the flow. Let's go. First Kings 2 and 11. I'm going to take y'all down here, right? And Ahijah, right, caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in 12 pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, take thee 10 pieces for thus say the most high Hawah of Israel. Behold, I will rent the kingdom out of the hand of Shalom and mm. I will give ten tribes to thee. I will tear it apart. He's tearing the kingdom out of the hands of Solomon. We're going to be right back in that Forbidden Histories so we can link that with what's going on and actually happening in 775 right here in America in Kalelus. Now surf the wave and apply it to what you just read that all this was written much more recently. And it's applying to what's going on with Solomon and the Toltec, Toltecsis, and Theodore Roos. Apply that story to this story. Overlap these two and what do you get? But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Because that they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtoreth 
the goddess of the Zidonians, Kamosh, right, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do which, which is right in my eyes and to keep my statutes and my judgments as David his father. Howbeit I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life for David my servant's sake, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, and I will give it unto thee, even ten tribes. So he said, I'll take the kingdom out of his son's hand. In 775, Nehemiah Theodore reconquered the American Empire of Kalelus. Kalelus was ruled by Sylvanus Toltexas, Solomon, the builder, master builder. <laughs> wow the hereditary ruler of the former Israelite Romani colony or tribes. Kalelus was founded in the first century BC, all right, by the Babylonian Exilarch. Now, we're talking about Solomon II, Babylonian Exilarch. Solomon. So he was conquered. It was taken out of his hands. Now, I know one story, you know, has some kind of you know, living and then dying, and then the kingdom gets split off. This story has it. But check it out. Now, I don't want to assume that it's saying that Solomon was fighting Theodorus personally. But look how it's kind of written. In 775, Nehemiah Theodore reconquered the American Empire of Kalelus. It says Kalelus was ruled by Solomon. So it doesn't mean that he just came and conquered Solomon personally. It's just saying that it was previously ruled by Solomon. But it's skipping over what happened. And now we can tie back into my man natural by law to put together what happened according to the script. That this kingdom was ripped apart after Solomon's death. So it says this Kalelus or promised land or Judah or Udal was ruled previously by Solomon before it was reconquered by the Rus, this other Israelite family. Israelite, Israelite, connected. Script, connected. So, um, King Solomon slipped up, right, and lost his grip, right? And because King Solomon lost his grip, the Most High gave him a warning. He, he gave him a heads up. He told him, if you, being king, King Shalom, king of peace, slip and turn away from me, the whole nation will fall and they shall split apart. Alright? Solomon, you know, that boy slipped. Right? He slipped hard. Right? So, um, him slipping hard did what? It brought us all into the situation that we're in now. Right? So, um, we're going to go ahead and continue, right, fam? Hold on. All right, so in uh, 1 Kings chapter 5, right, we were seeing how Solomon was dealing with King uh, Hiram, right? Uh, the king of Tyre, right? Pay attention. And um, we can see that the Tyre were the uh, Canaanites, right? The Sidonians. All right, so... Uh, Let's go ahead and dig on this Tyree, right? So, as we see, they say this is a variant spelling of Tyre, right? Island of Tyre, right? 
<laughs> so we don't want tire. But it says uh, tire, right? Of the island of Tyre, right? It is an island city in the Levant, in the Greek Tyros, from the Hebrew Zor. It literally means the rocky place, right? Rock, a rocky place. Right? And then, um, I just thought it was crazy how it tied into Tartan, right? And it says that, uh, it's a cloth from Tyree, right? Or Tyre. And it says the Central Asian people, the Tartar, right? The Tartar. So the Tartars are dealing with the Tyranians, right? The Tartars are the Tyranians. And we saw how in this one, right, when we were dealing with the Vikings, North Africa, the Middle East, and Central Asia, right? So here we are reading on the Tyranians, and it says that they are of the Tartar, the Tartar people, right? And they're known for their clothes. The Central Asian people, right? They wore purple. So the city of Tyre or Tyre is known for its purple. Like so-called Lakers, right? So they're walking around in this Phoenician purple, right? And um, this Tyranian leads back to Tartar, right? The Tartars. And we know who the Tartars are, right? Let's see. Tartars of who? Genghis Khan, the Mongols, right? The Mongols. So these are your Canaanites, right? The Tartars, right? Oh boy, we're gonna get back in these Mongols, and uh, I really want to get back in that medieval uh, Israelite empire, because as we know, Mongols is another term that's sort of been blended over, and the original Mongols and these original Khans, and their and their stories, the way they told them. And split our history apart. They put our Israelite stories in all these different stories. And these Khans and Genghis Khans were also tribes. And these Israelites and these Genghis Khan was hijacking into this Khan. And the Presta John drop, you get that he's the foster, uh, he's the uh, foster son or the uncle of Presta John or this priest king or this King David or this Solomon. So you have someone being kind of grafted into the family who wanted the title of Khan. And that became a war that went down because Preston John or this David wouldn't intermarry his daughter with this Genghis or Zingus, or, you know, all these other names they got for him. So that's another story on top of these stories that's all now blending into one thing. They're not separated. They were just put in separate places and they were calling even us as Israelites in Russia, Mongols. You know what I'm saying? And then now we have one uh, image of a Mongol, you know what I'm saying? When, shit, when they were really talking Mongol, they were really talking these tribes of Karyats. And the Karyat Mongol tribes were the tribes of Preston John or Priest King or King David. These were the tribes of who they called nomads. You know what I'm saying? Certain tribes that, you know, weren't living in, they were living in tents because they had certain covenants that they, uh, you know, weren't supposed to have any earthly possessions. So they were calling them nomads because they were keeping the purity of the law and not having any, any possessions in certain cases. So maybe we're going to get into back into the Rechabites and all that, man. So all that stuff ties together with the Mongols, the Rechabites. I want to uh, skip ahead just a little bit because we're about to get into some main drop. Tyree. So, um, let's see what we can get out of this, right? 
Uh, we're just looking for something. We're just looking for something. Deal with me momentarily. Oh, it says right here, right? In the 19th century, the river was a conduit for the transport of logs from Maine's great north woods to be sawn into lumber at mills around Old Town in Orono, right? And transported on ships from Bangor to the head of the tide. All right? And he said, what? He says, and we will cut the wood out of Lebanon as so much as thou shalt need, and we will bring it to thee in floats by the sea, right? And here we're reading that they did this with the logs, right? Let's continue to, to, to read on. It says the Penobscot, right, were an indigenous people in North America with members who reside in the United States and Canada. All right. They were located in the state of Maine along the Penobscot River. Mm. All right. It says they were a part of the Wabanaki Confederacy or the Abenaki. <laughs> <laughs> Abenaki, right? What does that shit sound like? What does that sound like to you? Right? <laughs> It says that uh, the word Penobscot originates from a mispronunciation of their name for themselves, which is this word, right? The Penawatskui. The word means rocky part or descending ledges. This is what the word means, right? The word means rocky part, right? But isn't this the same word for Tariq? Mm. Right? <laughs> Come on. Where was it? It says the name of the city means rock after its rocky formation. Right? Hold on, fam. All right, so, um, we can see that the name means rocky part, right? And as they show us right here, Tyree equals a rock. Mm. And it's still a Phoenician city, right? After the rocky formation. Right? So it says the word means rocky part or descending ledges and originally referred to the territory on the portion of the Pino, the Penobscot River, right? Between present day Old Town and Bangor. All right. So, um, we're going to continue. This is Bangor, Maine, right? Bangor, Maine. It is also known as the Queen City. And um, it says that the Pen the Penobscot have inhabited the area around present day Bangor for at least 11,000 years and still occupied the tri tribal land on the nearby Penobscot Indian Island Reservation. All right. Industrialization of lumbering, shipping, and manufacturing. Right? It says the Penobscot River Main, <clears throat> excuse me, main Northwoods drainage basin above Bangor was unattractive to settlement for farming, but well suited for lumbering. Winter snow allowed logs to be dragged from the woods by horse teams, carried to the Penobscot 
Porsche tributaries log driving in the snow melt brought to them brought them to waterfall power sawmills up river from Bancourt. Alright, so um it says the saw lumber was then shipped from the city's docks. Mm. Bangor being at the head of tide between rapids and the ocean, two points anywhere in the world. It says shipbuilding was also developed. Alright, so um, we read here in the text, right, that they let the wood of Lebanon mm. float by sea, right? They let the wood of Lebanon float by sea. Right? It says, My servant shall bring them down from Lebanon unto the sea, and I will convey them by sea and float unto the place that thou shalt appoint me, and will cause them to be discharged there, and thou shalt receive them, and thou shalt make, or sorry, thou shalt accomplish my desire in giving food for my household. Alright? So he was going to give him these trees of Lebanon. In return, King Solomon was to give him food, right? And uh, let's see if we can snap this one. Let me see. We got this one. Right here, right? It says, And King Solomon made a navy of ships mm. in Azon Gerber, right? Wow. Okay. Okay. Man, my brother's doing so well with this man and, and such a beautiful way to surf. Please, uh, you know, surf the wave of natural, man. Surf the wave with all the tribe, man. And, you know what I'm saying? You see it flowing together. And just, just flow with it, man. Um, it's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing, man. Hiram, take the wheel, man. Be back in that paleo. But yeah, you know, ships, ships, ships. We're just talking about the soldiers and ancestors of the Swan Knights. Barber Hatzin. He also had a fleet of trading vessels known as the ships of Solomon. We're just talking Solomon the Builder or Sylvanus Toltec. Thus, so when you hear Toltec. Think about Solomon the Builder and the Mound Builders. Solomon the Builder and the Mound Builder of Sylvanus Toltec. Just 775 AD. He had a fleet of trading vessels known as the ships of Solomon or the swan boats. The ships are shaped like, like a swan with its sail like the wings of a beautiful gliding white swan. After the defeat of the Sylvanus to Texas, the members of the royal family. So after this Israelite family was defeated, that was formerly ruled by Solomon. So who is this? You know, are we talking northern, southern tribes? You know what I'm saying? Tribe of Judah and tribes of Ephraim. So are we saying that after the tribes of Judah? were defeated or you know i don't know you know what i'm saying but we're talking about definitely you know what's opening up to be one side of israelites and another side of israelites after the defeat of sylvanus told texas the members of the royal family were sent back to europe mm. and how does all that connect with the fight against these so-called black, so-called Scottish kings <laughs> in Europe. Now, after this goes down, they're sent back to Europe. After the defeat of Solomon, 
or his people, the members of his royal family, were sent back to Europe where they were under the protection of Nehemiah Theodorus. Rus. So first it said Theodoric, now it says Theodorus. And I'm saying, let's get it bigger. So you know this ain't no play play. So now they're under the protection. So if Theodore Roos wanted to annihilate them like these people do in war, he wouldn't put them under any protection. He would just have them annihilated and put into slavery or something, right? That's how you start to figure that this must be all family. And even though they were conquered or defeated or the promised land was taken back by this other family of Israelites, still they've protected their family in Europe against who? <laughs> Four black Scottish kings, King James and him, King Charles and him. He, they still needed protection from these other families there. So called Esau or whatever you want to call it. Which more? See, more is a general thing of covers many tribes, but which tribe, which ones, which tribe of Moors, which ones? So after the defeat of you know Solomon's people, this royal family was sent to Europe under the protection of the person who conquered them, Theodore Rus, Rus, Russia, Rus. Russia, Georgia, Rus, Russia, Georgia, Babylon, Babylonian exilarch, Theodore Rus, and his family. So they were under the protection of Nehemiah, Theodore Rus, and his family. How does this connect to Turkey and Mazaka and the Byzantines? And why was the Byzantine Empire taken out one year after the 1452 Papal Bull? 1453, the Byzantine Empire is wiped. And we're talking Russia, 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 Byzantine, Mazaka, Mazaka, Mos Mashi, Moshe. Man. So you connect your Mazaka, you, you connect the Mashika, the Meshi, South America, Prester John, Cuba. Wah wah. Theodore Roos protects the family still. The legend of Oger and Dane, son of Godfrey, Gadron, and Dune de Mainz actually refers to Tuatha of Danan or Dan. So now we're talking tribe of Danan or Dan or Dunan, who were also known as Mananan. Or Maine of America. Natural by law. Hitting the target. This is a hard to find book. Love to sell Ma. Who had to wrestle it out of the hands of somebody, man. To get it to us. Now we're talking the tribe of Dan. Who are also Mananan or Maine. So now this brother is talking about Tyree. And the real Tyree. When you're talking about the ships of Solomon and all the connection with the king of Tyree, who he had an alliance with in Maine, which is connected to the tribe of Dan. And they were a seafaring people, right? So, you know, the tribe of Dan had an alliance with these Phoenicians as well, right? And these Tyree, Tyree, right? They both, you know, were masters of the sea, right? And they were right out of Maine. Now, back in the etymology, you know, showed that Maine uh, or Tyree also has something to do with flat. And I want to recon how Maine has something to do with flat. You know, we'll get that. But so the Irish legend of Ragaman also allude to this family. So we got to look up the Ragaman because that has to do with the tribe of Dan and Maine in America or Mananan. What up, man? And then it gets back into Israel III, went south to the Toltec lands of Mexico. So now we're picking up, we're, we're tying in Mexico with Kitsikoto and Joshua. And Moses, Mexica, which is Mozaka, which we're talking about the Byzantine again. And Rus, and Theodore Rus. <laughs> oh man, come on, it's getting good.
Toltec lands of Mexico and his grandson, Makir Amarik. Now you have Americans. Marik and the Welsh G G G genealogies mixed cult of the Toltecs. So Joshua was connected to these Toltecs. Kitsukoto is the priest of these Toltecs. The Toltecs is connected to Solomon, King Solomon. Get it? Who left Cholula. So the priest of Kitsukoto who left Cholula for Rhoda. So Cholula plays big and Rhoda is Rhode Island. So you have Maine, that's Tyree. Now you have this Rhoda and Chula, Cholula which is Rhode Island, and about 1,000. This is your real connection, reality. So Israel the third, also known as Mixquioto, or his grandson is Mixquioto of the Toltecs, was the grandfather of Tapu Zin, Israel the seventh priest of Kitsukoto. Now Joshua plays in this, you know, you can figure him in when you're talking about priest of Kitsukoto when we rock that that is the Hawashua, Hawashua, Joshua. Crossing, crossing the mark, the sign who left Cholula for Rhoda in 1000 AD. He rejoined the remnant of the Rodans who he led east and then back to Europe and some of the Latin Jewish Rodans or Israelite Rodans. Settled in northwest Spain. Now you have Israelites in Spain. Whereas trained warriors. We just got that warrior drop. I told y'all you was trained up. They were welcomed in the fight to preserve the freedom in northwest Spain from the Muslims. So you got all the Preston John fighting the Mohammedans and, and all these folks. The, the, the Sultan and all that. Now these people are also fighting that power. They're not Christians. They labeled them Nestorian Christians, which refers to old king renowned for wise counsel. Well, who's the wise king? When you look up Nestor, it only refers to a wise king, which is Solomon, the builder. Let's keep surfing away, man, with the uh, natural man. We're going to take it into the dismount. You know, we try to get ahead a little bit. I want to get so much of this, man. So, I'm going to try to get to this uh, right around here, man. But get this whole thing, man. You got to sit in this classroom. It's truly uh, a, a powerful way to serve, man. Let's get it. And so on and so on. So, we were known for utilizing copper, right, fam? And we traded with copper goods, right? <clears throat> Says metallurgy in pre Columbian America. Right? Says archaeological evidence has revealed, had not revealed, metal smelting or alloying of metals by pre Columbian native peoples north of the Rio Grande. However, they did use native copper extensively. Alright? Native copper extensively. All right. And as we read, copper was abundant in the area of the Great Lakes. <clears throat> right. Which is where we were seeing that uh, it connects with this spot. Right. And this river. Right. When we check out the river. The river is right here. Mm. All right. And the Great Lakes region is like somewhere around here, right? Or maybe a little lower, my fault. It might be a little lower. But as we can see, this river where the logs float, right? Drip down all the way into the Atlantic, right? If not even more further into. All right. So, um, this is the old copper complex, right, in North America, 
right? So the cop color races was definitely digging on some cop, right? Mm-hmm. Which mm-hmm. we know is the real reason why these folks came over here, right? Because they wanted your shit, right? Mississippi, Mississippi and copper plates, right? Now check this out, right? This looks like the hijack that Solomon put y'all up on, right? See, when Solomon fell off, that's when the whole the whole thing split apart, right? I mean, we're going to continue to dig, right, fam? Mm. Copper in the eastern woodlands, right? So this is, this is the regions of the Levitical cities, right? Etua is a Levitical city, all right? Come on. So you see what's happening. The Most High told Solomon that if he didn't follow the statues after his father David, what was going to happen? All right. It says the native copper, as well as the knowledge to work it, is believed to have come from the Great Lakes area, hundreds of miles to the north of the Co- of the Cahokia polity and other Mississippian culture sites. All right, so they said they didn't do metallurgy, but they knew how to work these native copper. So let's dig on this native copper. All right, since we know the aboriginals were of the copper color races, right? It says it is an <clears throat> uncombined form of copper, which occurs as a natural mineral. Copper is one of the few metallic elements to occur in native form, although it most commonly occurs in oxidized states and mixed with other elements. Native copper was an important ore of copper in historic times and was used by prehistoric peoples. All right, it says, uh, so-called native copper occurs rarely as a uh, isometric cubic in uh, octahedral crystals, right? But it is more typically used as uh, what, irregular masses and fracture fillings. All right. It has a reddish a reddish oranges, orangish or brownish color on the fresh surfaces but typically is weathered and coated with a green tarnish of copper. Right? A reddish oranges brown. Right? Right. Reddish orders orangish brown, right? Let's see. Red orange. <laughs> brown skin all right and what did they say <clears throat> right <clears throat> so um Right, fam, you see what pops up, right? I see what pops up. Reddish brown, red brown skin, right? So that's you, cop color races. All right, fam. Of the cop color races. And um, when we were digging on Solomon, right? When we were digging on Solomon. says that Solomon's wives turned his heart after other gods, their mm-hmm. own national deities to whom Solomon built temples, right? Thus incurring divine anger and retribution in the form of division 
of the kingdom after Solomon's death. So the kingdom was divided, right? After Solomon died. Right? Well, we read it earlier, right? Mm -hmm. He said that he would split Jerusalem apart from Israel. Right? It says the Most High punishes Solomon by removing ten of the twelve tribes of Israel from the Israelites. Mm. All right? So the Most High, after Solomon, you know, messed up, cut us off, right? So I'm doing some digging, right? And, you know, we already proved that uh, <laughs> the North Main Woods, right? Being Tyree hmm. of Lebanon, right? Main, main in that. Lebanon, man. right? Lebanon. And when we go to uh, chapter 5, right? My servant shall bring them down from Lebanon unto the sea, and I will convey them by sea and floats. Right? And this is Hiram, right? King of Tyree. Right? Mm, Tyree. So the North Wood, the North Main Woods, right, does this very thing, right? And and they have a forest attached to it, right? Where it grows the northern white cedar. Mm. Alright? So we can see how that's Lebanon, right? So this is the Proto Iroquoian language, right? It says the Proto Iroquoian is the name given to the hypothetical proto language of the Iroquoian languages, right? It says um, Lons Lonsbury estimated from glottal chronology at a time death of 3,500, 3,800 for the split of the South and North. Wow. Iroquois, right? The split. Wow. That's right? Amazing. What did we read? Right? That the Most High was going to remove, right? So we know the Ten Tribes is North, wow. right? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Estimated from glottal chronology at a time death of 3,500 to 3,800 for the split of the South and North. Wow, we are surfing the wave. So we're talking about now juxtaposing in the South and North Iroquois, Iroquois, which we just dug on the Tuscarora. See how we're surfing the wave? And Natawa and the Tuscarora drop. Man, you know, I just had these up, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't know how none of this was really going to all tie in. Oh, you know, but you got, I'm going to drop all this at Tesco or this is some artwork from it. So this is the real spill. And it's saying right here that according to the tribal legend, the Tesco or is split off from the Air Iroquois family of allied tribes, crossing the Mississippi by holding on to a grapevine. When the grapevine broke, the ones who had crossed over traveled east to the sunrise near the mouth of the Nuisi or Nusi, and the ones who stayed behind became their enemies. This separation, historians believe, may have taken place around 1400 AD. Whoa! So we're talking about tribe splitting. So we have a, a splitting of a tribe where they, historians, are putting at 1400 AD. Or are we talking about the same tribe split of this Iroquois or this Toltec, or are we talking about another, you know what I mean? But either way, we're talking about a splitting of a kingdom. And now we have it at 775. Theodore Reek reconquered the American Empire of Calais. Calais was ruled by Sylvanus Toltecs, Solomon the Builder, the hereditary ruler of the former Israelite Romani colony. Calais was founded by the first century BC by the Babylonian Exilarch. Known as Sylvanus Ogam or Sylvanus Bravo, 
Solomon II, Babylonian exilarch, Nasi of Mara, ruler of Sumer, Somerset in Britain, a great Romani Israelite ruler, soldier and ancestor of the Swanites, Barber Hakazim. He also had a fleet of trading vessels known as the ships of Solomon or swan boats. These ships are shaped like swans, right? Like beautiful gliding white swans. After the man, can you imagine how beautiful these ships were? Shaped like beautiful white swans. After the defeat of Sylvanus Toltecus, Toltec, Solomon, kingdom split. The members of the royal family were sent back to Europe, where they were under protection of the other. Israelite king Theodorus and his family, the legends of Ogier, of Dane, and Doom, and of Maïs, Maïs, actually referred to Tuat of Danan or Dunan, who are also known as Mananan or Maine or Tyree of America. Tyree of America. Tyree of america we're just surfing away man and thank y'all for surfing away with us man we just doing this for you all the love you've been giving man supporting um you know what i'm saying every bit of the drop that we're bringing out man and um you know what i'm saying i'll praise the creator because this is connecting in a, such a humbling way i'm humbled by this these brothers these scholars that are <laughs> much smarter than me much sharper than me i just really truly enjoy man the company of such great, you know what I'm saying, um, pure water waves, man, to keep crystallizing myself, man, and the rest of the tribe, you know what I mean, so all y'all coming over here, man, showing your love, uh, where we at, okay, here we go, yeah, hi, right. showing your love, man, supporting the drop, supporting drop nation, supporting, uh, you know what I'm saying, the family, the tribe, man, uh, love to the battle family, man, you know what I'm saying, doing doing a beautiful pilgrimage, man, and uh, yeah, you know, it, it's just a, it's, it's a building process, so you're helping us build, you're doing it, we're doing it for you, we're doing it for how I stew, because if it ain't about how I stew, it ain't about shit, man, it ain't about nothing, man, it's the manifestation of all this that we're talking, man, all that, that, you know what I'm saying, we're building on, is being built in real life, and you've been building it with us, man, so, we appreciate you, um, you know what I'm saying, because of that, it is what it is, because of that, you know what I mean, we're able to keep coming back, they hijack us, they knock us off the air, they take our website down, we keep coming back with more PDS, with more books, bigger, better, stronger, faster, man, because we're surfing the wave and we're doing it all together, man, so, all praise the creator, Hawaii, and you know, times like this,